Welcome to Albania, a small European country covering about 28,000 kilometers squared and with a population of 2.8 million as of 2020. Albania is part of the Balkans with Adriatic and Ionian coastlines and an interior crossed by the Albanian Alps. After spending over two weeks relaxing with our van parked at the beach, we were ready to explore Albania and our road trip began. Join us as we visit the capital city, Tirana, hike into the mountains, venture into one of the country's over 170,000 bunkers, find the most stunning coastlines and drive amazing twisty roads. You won't believe what Albania has to offer. We started our travels in Tirana, the capital of Albania. We spent the night in the van in the city and then the next morning we took the cable car up into the mountains to tackle a hike. It felt so good to get our bodies moving again after almost two weeks of rest. We've made it about one eighth of the way up the hill and shaken off the cobwebs and the legs. Difficult. <laughs> I'm breathing so heavy. It's just straight up right away. <laughs> nice to be moving the body again. Yeah. question about whether there was a bear or not was answered. We saw a bear, Scott. There's probably European brown bears around these parts. That's where we just climbed to. It appears we could have driven the van up here, but we had no idea. I'm yeah. glad we did the cable car. Yeah, me too. But for future reference, you probably could drive a van up here. Back in the van, we had some homemade iced tea waiting for us. It's so nice to be able to go and do an adventure and come right back to the house where we're comfortable. That's the best part about van life, in my opinion. Part two of the day is we think we might head into a bunker museum. We don't normally make plans very far in advance. <laughs> I don't like caves. Is this gonna be like a cave? Well, it's like a bunker. Well, I've never been in a bunker. <laughs> okay, we survived. That was really interesting. Wasn't allowed to film in there. Don't worry, I made sure we found a bunker we could show you in this video, so make sure you stick around to see the next one later on. These bunkers are a huge part of Albanian history and they are all over the country. We couldn't believe this camp spot we found. It literally checked all of our boxes. Ocean and mountain views, flocks of sheep and goats walking by in the morning, a bunker to explore and safe swimming, what a spot.
This might be one of the nicest wild camping spots we've ever found. I think what I've just found here is a bunker. I'm a bit too scared to go down that dark alleyway without a headlight and on my own, but maybe I'll come back. Throughout our travels, we learned a bit about the history of Albania. What was most obvious to us as outsiders was the presence of thousands of bunkers, something that neither of us had ever seen before. We learned that Albania was occupied during the Second World War, and they mounted a fierce resistance against their occupiers. Once the war was over, Albania was able to gain independence and a man named Enver Hoxha rose to power. He established a Stalinist regime and maintained an isolationist policy and outlook until the communists lost power in 1992. From 1967 to 1986, the communist regime established a bunkerization program. During this time, a total of 173,000 371 bunkers were constructed around the country in all different landscapes. Hoxha envisaged Albania fighting a two-front war against an attack mounted by Yugoslavia, NATO, or the Warsaw Pact. He suspected it would involve a simultaneous incursion by up to 11 enemy airborne divisions. He saw the bunkers as an essential form of defense from these potential attacks. Isn't it freaky? <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but yeah, this is very freaky. I went and got Brian, and now we're going to go down there. I've got my headlamps in here. I'm nervous. This looks really scary. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye, ocean. Here we go. Time for headlamps. Yeah, I brought both. Okay. Okay. Here we go. What's up there? I think we should go up. No. Yeah. That's too narrow. I think that'll lead to the... I don't think I want to do that, Brian. Okay. Look in there. It's so narrow. You know what? That goes to the upper section. Yeah, let's not do that. We'll get a view. Can you imagine building these? Like, no wonder so many people that were injured. And, oh my God, you can see light over there. So that's the other... It looks like a skylight. Oh. We should check it out. Yeah. It almost landed on me. Oh, this is spooky, baby. Look at it. Yeah, I agree. Reinforced with like a few bits of rebar. Yeah. Look at that. It's like. It's falling apart. It's falling apart. This might not be the safest. Look at this part of the wall. It's totally collapsed. Yeah. Holy. Whoa. What the? Where does that go? Can you get it on the camera? Yeah. yeah. No idea. This bunker is definitely different than the one we were in. We were in one that was a lot smaller and it was like, 
where people would live. Like there were living quarters and a mess hall and a theater and everything. This one feels more like an air raid shelter. There's not like sealed doors, like if there was a nuclear attack. So it's bigger, but it's very spooky because we, it's not a museum where there's people like working and making sure you're safe. I think you're doing great. It's very scary, but all these exits are helping me. Great. I just feel like this could collapse at any moment. Wow, this isn't the end. You know what it looks like? It's collapsed. Well, is it collapsed? Oh yeah, it does. Because you can see. It's very scary. You can see it's collapsed through there. Yeah. Oh, I have nervous butterflies. Yeah. So what do you think? Well, I really feel for the people who had to be in these, working all the time, building them. And I feel for any of the people who had to like live or work in them once they were built. It just doesn't feel natural being in caves and like confined spaces with no sunlight. Like, look wow. at that. It's all of this is like about to collapse. Yeah, it is. Those few little strands of rebar are not making me think it's safe. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe. We should get out of so here. what's happened is they built it and then it's eroded. Yeah. Like yeah. over time. Oh yeah, you should show them this room. That's not a big room. Oh, wow. Well, wow, that was great. That is really scary. I'm actually sweating so much from that. That was so scary. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness, eh? Look at the wasp nests up there. Maybe they're bats' nests. They're made of mud. I don't think they're wasps. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, they're bats' nests. There are an average of 5.7 bunkers for every square kilometer. The bunkerization program posed a massive drain on Albania's weakened economy during those years. The construction of prefabricated bunkers alone cost an estimated 2% of net material product. There was also a massive human cost, with an estimated 70 to 100 people dying per year while constructing the bunkers. The bunkers were mostly abandoned after the fall of communism, and today very few are used. The current day uses include housing, restaurants, and storage. However, you can still see the bunkers today dotting the landscape of the country, reminding you of its recent history. This bunker seems to have four entrances, so this one had a hole in the floor. Wow, what an experience. One of the coolest spots we've ever camped. Well, I'm glad I faced my fears and checked those out. That was really interesting and such a big part of the history in Albania. The color of the ocean right now, the way the sun's hitting it. Oh, it's just so stunning. Oh, I think that's my favorite color. Spectacular colors. Time for lunch. We have pumpkin soup leftovers from last night. We have so much pumpkin left. And look at this view. Even though we would have loved to stay here for a couple days, we needed to head into the nearest town to attempt to get some chores done. Our water tank sprung a leak back when we were in Croatia and we were finally ready to fix it. We were lucky to run into the flock of goats again on our drive out. We saw many sheep and goat throughout Albania, which made me very happy, as I love these animals. Goats are used for both milk and meat in Albania, with approximately 50% of the goat population living and grazing in the mountains. So we're gonna head into town now, and then hopefully find another beautiful spot to stay this evening at a trailhead so we can hike again tomorrow. And this road is bumpy, always makes me a bit nervous. You got a cow beside you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wear my headlamp a fair amount throughout the day to do things. We made it to town. We're parked here on the street and I found a gas place. Brian was able to get our propane tank filled 
and I just turned on our stove for the first time since we entered Croatia. So it's been like five months. Oh, it feels so good. Yay, nice work, Brian. We did it. That was awesome. We came to the local spring where Brian is filling up our water jug. So it's like where all the locals fill up their water, I think. So we're getting some water so we can do all of our dishes and everything. So far, this has been a lovely town to do errands in because not only is everything close, but it's also beautiful and everyone is seems so nice and friendly. The goal is to head to a camp spot up on the ridge tonight so that we can hike up a 2,000 meter peak tomorrow. it was raining it's still raining but as we're hiking up it's sort of feeling like we might break through the cloud layer so we're just gonna keep going it is stunning in here wow <laughs> Brian's ears ears are cold the inside of my ears. <laughs> We've gained the ridge now and it's absolutely stunning. The rain stopped, it's just misty now. We're so glad we got out. The rain on the roof this morning deterred us from going hiking. Have you told them we were gonna get up at no, six and hike by seven? And we both vowed that no matter what, we were gonna do it. <laughs> we started at 12. <laughs> By the time we had lunch, we thought, okay, let's just go for a walk. And we put zero pressure on ourselves. We just said, we'll just go however far we want to go. It was raining pretty hard at that point. And we just kept climbing. We probably climbed like 800 vertical meters. And we feel so much better being out here. I'm really glad we did it. I actually love hiking in bad weather. Yeah. Let's keep climbing for a bit longer. We didn't bring much in terms of water and snacks because we really didn't think we were going far. So we'll have to turn around eventually here. Straight up. I love this. There he goes. This, this is my favorite type of hiking. <laughs> straight up on rocks. Brian was the one who was trying to talk us out of hiking the most. <laughs> the whole time it was raining. As soon as we took like three steps though, I looked back and he was just grinning. He loves being out here, especially in the cooler weather. And it's just such a good reminder that sometimes you just need to nudge yourself to take one or two steps out the door and just get over that little hurdle and then just have no pressure for yourself. Just go however far feels good that day. Today, turns out, felt good for us to keep going and going. And we both feel so much better for it. But even if we only took 10 steps, I still would have felt good that we tried. Quenching the thirst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we were climbing up, I noticed that these plants, these trees were collecting water droplets. And I thought, oh, maybe that'll quench my thirst a little bit. So clearly I'm getting thirsty. Wow, I bet you this is so vast with no clouds. Yeah. We've climbed about 650 vertical meters, so that's a good climb. And I think I might be too thirsty to go on. So I think that was a good workout. So let's uh, head back to the van, drink a bunch of water. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Some of these black pine trees that have their bark removed on an, on an area from the 70s to the 90s were used, they're used in the production of resins. So all this has been debarked. The sap here. So that would have been during the communist regime. 
Watch your head. Yeah, I don't think I'll touch it. This might be a very low power line here. Like, it's just above the height of my head. The sweet nectar. Water! Oh, that's good. You know what's good too? Seeing my sprouts. Oh, are they sprouting? Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that good? That's good. <laughs> I thought this would be a good time to show you how we find all of these different places and activities. So I started out the week by opening up Google Maps and zooming in and out until I found mountains. I would then open up the same area on my Gaia app and check for hiking routes and other people's GPS tracks. Once I found a hike that looked good, we planned our driving around that. We also had to factor in a few van jobs we needed to get done as we made our way south towards Greece. We made it to a campground where we can do our water tank repair and it was a tiny bit too long of a drive and we got really hungry. <laughs> There's a market here so I got some chips and some pop for us. So we're just sitting here basically in silence eating our chips. <laughs> and coke. <laughs> Before we tackle the job of the sealing of the water tank holes. Alright, here's our little setup. Storage drawer, water tank. That's the finished side, so that's my finger. So we just did that whole area, because that's where it had a weak point in that corner. Ah, that looks nice. Doing this with palm trees around. It's a bit chaotic in the van this morning because we're finally putting our water tank back in. Our final stop in Albania was Saranda. We found a spot just south of the city with an absolutely incredible view. This just solidified to us how amazing this country is. I mean, look at this water. Tomorrow we head to Greece for a few months. I'll introduce you to Greece in next week's video. Oh, and if you could subscribe and like this video, that would really help me out. Thanks, bye.